Hey, this is Mr. Bourne, and this video is about cosine and inverse cosine. It's part of a series of Soka Toa. This is episode 3 of 4. All right, now, Soka Toa, what part are we on here? We are on uh, the part where we are talking about the Ka. And the A stands for adjacent, and the H stands for hypotenuse. Right, so the cosine of an angle is the adjacent angle over the hypotenuse. So let's get a handle on what's adjacent and what the hypotenuse is in a given right triangle. The hypotenuse is always the side furthest from the right angle. So that would be this side right over here because it is furthest from the right angle. The adjacent side, well, which one is it? Which one is it? It depends on what angle we're talking about. Now there's only two others here because we never talk about the right angle here. We're, we're not trying to find out the right angle. We know what that is all the time. If the angle that we're looking for is up here, then our adjacent side would be right here. And so in this circumstance, the cosine of A which is our angle right over here, would be 3, because that's where I got the 3, over 5. Because here's the adjacent, and here's the hypotenuse. Now, what if the angle that we're actually out to get is this angle right over here? Well, the three centimeter length here is not the adjacent one anymore. The adjacent side is this one, the four centimeter length. Now the hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse, nothing changed there. So we're going to continue to write five right here for the hypotenuse, but now our adjacent is four. So the cosine of A, our angle, is going to be four over five. Okay, so let's take some real uh, side lengths and actually find an actual angle measure. Now we're going to be working in degrees today, so uh, if you've got your calculator handy, be sure that it's in degrees mode. One very fast way to actually find this out without actually checking in the mode panel, I mean this is quick if you want to do it, is to put in sine of 90. Why that? Because if it were in degrees mode, it would equal 1. That's not 1. So it must be in radians mode. Yikes, let's change this. So here's how you change around your calculator. If you're using a TI-83 plus or a TI-84 plus, this is the same thing. Uh, you press the mode button, which is in the upper row here next to the second key. Press the downward arrow key two times so that radian is blinking. Okay, we want to arrow over to see degree blinking. And then you can choose it and then set the degree mode by hitting enter. Now radian is not bolded anymore, so we're in degree mode. I'm going to exit the mode, and let's do our little test again to make sure that sine 90 is 1. That way it that tells us our calculator is in degree mode, and it is. Yes. Okay. So let's take a look here at our triangle again. Cosine of angle is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. All right. So what angle do we actually want to find? Well, let's get Mr. Angle here. And let's say that we are positioned at this spot, and this is the angle that we want to find here. Right, so um, from our point of view, from where Mr. Angle is looking, our adjacent is 3. And our hypotenuse is 5. So we want to find the cosine A is equal to 3 over 5. Okay, now A is kind of what we are after. A is the value that when we take the cosine of it, it should equal the ratio of three-fifths. So we are out to find A. We want to find out what A is. All right, well, let's see. Here's how we can do that. Um, let's just write out the algebra here. Cosine A is equal to 3 over 5. And what we need to do is we need to somehow, quote unquote, remove this cosine and get A all by itself. Then we will know the angle measure. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use the inverse 
of cosine a. So I'm going to position this out here a little bit like this, and we're going to say cosine inverse. That's what that little to the power 1 is, cosine inverse. And what happens? These cancel out, and we are just left with a, which is the angle that we want, is equal to cosine of the inverse cosine of 3 fifths. Okay, calculator time. Just hit clear, press the second key, cosine, and now you see we've got this inverse cosine, 3 fifths. And you can put 3 fifths in by having 3 divided by 5. Same thing. Hey, there we go, 53.13. Okay, now whatever your math teacher tells you to round this to, be sure to round it. So I'm, I'm going to say let's round it to the nearest hundredth. So this would be 53.13. Get rid of that. And this is equal to 53.13 degrees. Okay, so how about what if we wanted to find that other angle? Yeah, we could find it with a little bit of uh, subtraction and knowing that all the angles inside of a triangle sum up to 180, but let's just kind of, let's keep on the groove here and let's continue to use cosine to figure this out. All right, well, this time Mr. Angle, the one that we want is not the one up there, but it's the one down here. So now from the perspective of that angle, uh, we've got a different adjacent for, and the hypotenuse is the same here. So cosine A is 4 over 5. Four over five, and we're going to use the uh, inverse cosine. This will cancel out, and now we've got A all by itself, the angle that we want, and this will be cosine inverse 4 fifths. Second cosine for the inverse, 4 over 5, close your parentheses just for good measure, and now we've got 36. 0.86. Now rounding to the nearest hundredth, this 9 will push up this 6 to a 7. So 36.87 degrees. Okay, finding angles is not too bad, but what if we have to find a side length? Here's a couple of examples. I've got a first example here of finding a missing side length. So we're going to find this missing side length right down here. All right, now we're given an angle measure, 30 degrees, and we've got the hypotenuse. So what we need to do is we need to find what would be the adjacent. Well, cosine is perfect for this because it involves the adjacent side. So, okay, let's start, do our little setup here. The cosine of the angle, which is 30 degrees, it's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So our unknown value x over 8 seems like there's not enough there. But uh, hang on, we've got to fill in a little bit more. We've got our 30 degree angle, remember? So let's just write it all in. Cosine of 30 degrees, and we're not trying to find angle, we're trying to find a side length, is equal to x over 8. And we want to get x all by itself, because that's what we do a whole lot in, uh, when we're doing the algebra. So this means that we're going to multiply both sides by 8. And I'll put that in parentheses so you can see that this is multiplication. How come? Why do we multiply, multiply both sides by 8? Now well, here's why. These 8s will cancel out. And then that leaves x all by itself. Yes! 8 times cosine. 30 degrees is going to somehow equal x. 
All right. Well, this is a straight up calculation we can do in the calculator. Let's bring it over. 8 times the cosine of 30 degrees. 6.9. Yay. Uh, we'll just round it to the nearest tenth. That's easy enough. Okay, how about a second example? That one went kind of fast. Okay, here's another example. Again, we are given some information. We've got our angle already, and that is going to go in place of A. And we are given a side. But this time we are looking for what would be the hypotenuse. It's the hypotenuse because it's furthest from the right angle. Huh, okay. Well, all right, so let's write this down. Cosine 50 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, the adjacent is 13, and our hypotenuse is x. Ugh, so we have to isolate the variable when it's in the denominator. No fun, but yeah, a little bit of algebra reworking and we can get it done. Okay, if you watch the sign video, I told you about this little technique where we can kind of swap the denominator with everything over here, which is on the left side. But I'll just write it out the long way so you can kind of see what's going on. All right, so we're going to multiply both sides by x. Okay, now what this does is this going, is going to cancel the x just on the right side. It doesn't cancel it over here. You might be saying, but why do you want to cancel x? We're trying to find x. Yes, I am, but the x has reappeared over here. In effect, I've moved the x over this way. So what we've got is x times cosine 50 will be equal to 13. All right. Now, getting x all by itself means we're going to have to divide because this is a product, x times cosine 50. Now, remember, cosine 50 is a number. I mean, it's not like a complicated you know, function at this point. So here's what you can do. This is going to save you some pain. We'll just divide both sides by cosine 50. And that means that it'll go away on this side. And what we've got left is x is equal to 13 divided by cosine 50. Okay. 13 divided by cosine of 50. That's an easy one to put in the calculator. And there we go, 20.22. Now, this is a degree measure. No, it's not. It's not a degree measure. It's, a, uh, it's the hypotenuse side length. So 20.22. All right. 20.22. OK. Let's do a so-called real world problem because they always end the hard stuff with real world stuff. A zip line is connected to the top of a stand and the other end is anchored to the ground level. All right, so what do they mean? Uh, the ground level is right over here. And this part up here is where they mean when they say it's uh, connected to the top. So this is like a platform or a tree or cliff or something. Um, the angle of inclination is 25 degrees from the ground to the upper attachment. Aha! So 25 degrees means that's this right there. Uh, if the ground anchor is 50 meters from the base of the stand, aha, more important information, 50 is how long this side is. How long is the cable? All right, so now we've got an actual target to go after. 
I'm going to kind of overline this with red. That is what we are looking for, the distance of that. So that would be similar to the hypotenuse. And it's not drawn in the figure here, but I'm going to add a little right angle so we can see where the hypotenuse is, where the right angle is a little bit more easily. Okay, so we've got a 25 degree angle here. We have an adjacent side. We're looking for the hypotenuse. Cosine 25 degrees is equal to 50 over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to label that H. How about that? Okay, well, let's rearrange this equation. H will be equal to 50 over cosine 25. If you're wondering, how did I switch this side and this H? If you're wondering about that, skip back in this a little bit, and you can see that what we do with the algebra is that we multiply denominator on both sides and then uh, divide both sides by the cosine expression. And so this has the effect of swapping the left side with the denominator. Okay, 50 divided by cosine 25. Fifty divided by cosine twenty-five. We are about to find out how many meters the cable is. Fifty-five point one seven. Okay. Well, that's all we've got for this video. End of episode three. The last one will be on tangent.